welcome to episode two of How to Learn Anything, a show where I learn two unrelated skills from scratch and combine them in interesting and unconventional ways. During the show, we'll break down the process of learning cool stuff through bite-sized chunks of information provided by industry experts, my failure, and hopefully, my eventual success. The other day, I noticed that I was surrounded by machines, like toasters and my smartphone that I used every day but really had no idea how they worked. For this episode, I'd like to turn the tables and build a machine to complete a task that I've never done before. That task will be taught by my mom's friend's friend, who is a grandmother, a lady I've heard is pretty good at baking a tasty cake. Once she provides me with the steps and ingredients to bake this cake, I will attempt to construct a robot that is able to recreate her recipe step by step. The cake and robot will be considered a success once it receives her approval. Let's get frustrated and almost give up. This is how to build a robot to bake a cake. So I'm gonna ask you, what do you know about robotics? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so where you're gonna wanna start is you're gonna wanna uh, approach people that might know something. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna find uh, get some kind of basic uh, circuitry stuff, like this is pretty cheap, you can get it off the internet. And you're gonna wanna do some self-learning on uh, how to like code the hardware that you have in front of you. Once I have the basic fundamentals of robotics figured out, yeah. what is the next step that we should start focusing on? The next step that you're gonna wanna focus on is drawing a plan. Once you've got your plan drawn out, you're gonna wanna build a timeline, so I wanna have this done then, this done then, this done then, and trust me on this one, things are gonna fail. Oh, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> yes! Yeah, <laughs> it worked. Yeah. And you need to be ready, and you need to have that timeline plan so that when one thing fails, uh, and that you fall behind on that timeline, that you're gonna be able to spend maybe another week, or another two weeks, oh figuring, out, figuring, figuring out what's going wrong. The crux of all of this yeah. is that if it doesn't work, you're gonna have to sub out that technology no. for new technology that, that works. sounds like the worst. And it takes so long because- Whoever it... does this for fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in order to get started with this project, I first had to get an Arduino board, which translates information sent from my computer to the hardware I have plugged into it. I also had to get a bunch of hardware online to make this stuff work, and then I had to download software to program the hardware onto my computer. My goal for this week is to try and get a base understanding of how robotics and programming works, and then use that knowledge and apply that to the first design of the robot. First, I used my computer to get a light to blink, and that was super cool. And then I made a whole bunch more blinking light stuff and learned that robotics seems to be 95% frustration and 5% moments of pure joy. I made a temperature sensor that didn't work, and I made a night light. At which point, I felt confident enough to try and tackle one of the most important parts of the robot, the servo. Okay, here we go. What? <laughs> hey, here we go. Yes. What? Come on. Okay, here we go. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this, folks, is what the beginning of a robot that bakes a cake looks like. What would you say is the biggest difference of baking this cake compared to when you used to bake it back when you were 10 years old? Um. You had to go milk the cow to get the milk. Really? Well, yes, of course. And then you had to make your butter. You had to separate the milk to get the cream. It was a long process. After Cassie blew my mind with how much work everything was back in the day, she took me through the recipe that my robot is supposed to bake. The recipe goes three quarter cups of butter, one cup of sugar, and two eggs mixed well. When you're done mixing, you add one cup of milk, two cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, one of vanilla, some salt to your taste, and mix it in one more time before putting it in the oven at 350 degrees. The thing that concerns me the most about that recipe that you just told me is how much mixing we're gonna have to do, because I have no idea how we're gonna make a robot that can constantly well, mix I, this I, stuff. Well, I have an idea. 
Okay. You want to hear it? I want to hear it. Okay. Because he is new age and I'm old age, so I do it by hand. But he is new age, so he's going to hold a, a egg beater, you know, my hand mixer. Yep. I have one. According to Miss Potts' recipe, this robot is going to have to perform five basic functions. First, it's got to be able to break eggs. I found a handbreaker online that I think will work for that. Second, it has to be able to pour the ingredients, then move the mixer, turn on the mixer, and finally pour the batter into a pan. But enough planning, let's get to it. Let's give it a shot. After a few weeks of ordering and waiting for the right parts, I attempted building the track that would hypothetically move the mixer up and down. Here it goes. Oh my god. Yes! Yes! Once I got that figured out, I met up with Mike and learned that the motor that was supposed to move the mixer wasn't strong enough. So while I waited for the parts to solve that problem, I worked on the egg breaking device. Yes! Yes! By the time that started working, the extra parts arrived, so I built the bull spinning and tilt mechanisms, reprogrammed the new motor, and added some measuring cups to the dump bot. Yes! Now that the prototypes, for the most part, are done, uh, which happened like two months behind schedule, I'm gonna try and put the whole thing together. Once I got the prototypes mounted onto the frame, Mike helped out with writing and debugging the combined code and hardware. Since everything seemed to be relatively on track, I built a more robot-looking frame and had a bunch of late nights trying to get it done. All right. I think it's ready. It is the next day. I woke up this morning and the robot, for whatever reason, wasn't working. After a few days of debugging, I thought there was a problem with one of the boards I used to turn on the mixer, which is causing the whole system to short when turned on. So I spent a day building one. All right, we've been troubleshooting this problem for like two or three weeks on and off. We have one more solution that we're gonna try, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Last attempt. You ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. This is a robot to bake cake. Oh my God. Oh, no wonder it took you so long. Okay. Okay, make a good cake. Didn't work. <laughs> perfect, perfect. It was, come on. Hey, hey. Yes. We did it, we did it. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> Yes! Yes! That was awesome! Wow! Excellent! <laughs> Excellent key! And that's how you spend $1,000, 200 hours, six months to bake a cake. Piece of cake? As far as takeaways go for this episode, the first one is, is that if you think something's gonna take one hour, plan for it to take four. The second is, despite the pot spot not being a total success, through the failures, I've learned more about the skill of robotics than any other skill in this entire series. And the last one? This is the end of this episode. This isn't the end of Cakebot.